Okay, this is going to be part two of my triple integrals, changing the order of integration videos. And in the first part, uh, we looked at uh, we looked at integrating with respect to z first, uh, then y, then dx, or then with then with respect to y and with respect to x. This was all given to us. Um, I explained why that made sense, and then I switched uh, the dy and dx. Okay, so that was one thing. Let's totally do it, uh, you know, from a, let's do a different variable first. So I think what I'm going to do in this case first, again, just at random, I think I'm going to integrate with respect to, let's integrate with respect to x next. Okay, so I'm going to integrate with respect to x. Okay, so that means that my inside limits of integration have to be of the uh, have to be surfaces of the form x equals something, x equals something. And again, typically, uh, um, when, when you see these written down, you don't see the little x equals x equals, okay? They'll just write the surfaces, write the surfaces. And I'll do that in a second. But I always like to do this. It kind of helped remind me of who needed to be isolated, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay. A second ago, we were saying... You know, in the first video, we said if you integrate with respect to z first, I kind of imagine, you know, uh, kind of, again, traveling like I was along the z-axis, kind of from, from the bottom to the top, from the negative z-axis to the positive z-axis. And I thought if I could somehow just move that z-axis to where it goes through my, my surface, I think, well, what would be the equation of the bottom surface, which we said was z equals zero, and then we said what would be the equation of the top surface. We said that would be z equals 1 minus y. I'm going to do the exact same thing now. Except now, since I'm going to do x first, I'm going to come from the sort of I'm going to come from the direction of the negative x-axis. And again, just to remind yourself, right? This is positive x over here. The negative x-axis is back here. So imagine if you had a line that was traveling this direction that punched through your tent, okay? Went right through the tent. Imagine a bullet, somebody shot a bullet, pew, right through your tent, okay? What's the equation of the surface of the back of the tent? It's kind of like the wall. Well, if you think about it, you know, it would, it would travel through, you know, the back portion of, of this little tent. It would, it would come through this little triangular wall What's the equation of that little triangular wall? Well, that's going to be the equation x equals 0. It's just going to, it would first enter through the yz plane. Okay, this bullet, if somebody shot it. It would enter the surface through the yz plane. Well, assuming, uh, assuming you're not in the tent at the time, it would come right through, uh, you know, it would go straight through, and then it would come out the, 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 the left side. It would come out through this little curtain, and that's the equation y equals square root of x. Okay, that's the curve, y equals root x. Well, again, though, we need it in the form so that the x is isolated. Well, that's easy enough, you know, if we've got y equals root x, if we square both sides, we'll just get x equals y squared. So that's going to be my upper limit of integration, okay? So the lower limit of integration would be 0. The upper limit of integration would be y squared. Okay, now I've got to do, uh, you know, uh, either dz dy or dy dz. Okay, so let's talk about that in a second. So now I know I've got to do either, you know, dy dz or dz, dy, and again, we're going to do them both. So what I really need to do is I need to think about, uh, you know, the region, the domain, in the, uh, so we've already done x, so we need to look in the y, z plane. Okay, so I'm going to think about what, you know, what y and z coordinates are getting used in this three-dimensional object? Well, if you were to, to project the surface back into the yz plane, really, you would just, you know, you would get the, the you know, the, uh, the side of the tent that's, uh, that's in the, the yz plane. You would get just this little triangular region in the back. 
So we're even told the equation, right? And this is another thing. Pay attention to the equations. So we're told that this equation in the back is the line z equals 1 minus y. Well, that's just like having y equals 1 minus x. It's just going to be a line with a slope of negative 1, a, a z-intercept of 1 in this case, and a y-intercept of 1. So this is just the, uh, you know, the back wall. It's just this portion in the back. All right, so now we've got a choice. Again, do we want to integrate with respect to y first, or do we want to in integrate with respect to z first? So again, I'm going to label this as z equals 1 minus y. Okay, so I lost something. This is what I want. <clears throat> okay, so suppose, I don't know, suppose we want to integrate with respect to z next. Okay, so if I integrate with respect to z, again, I'm going to draw my line uh, parallel to the z-axis. And again, my, my limits of integration are going to be of the form z equals uh, some curve and z equals some curve. The lower uh, curve would simply be z equals 0. The upper curve would be z equals 1 minus y. And I'll rewrite this in a second, clean it up a little bit. Those will be my inside limits of integration. And then if we integrate with respect to y at the end, I would think, what's the smallest y-coordinate? Well, it's 0 to the largest y-coordinate, which is 1. And now I've got it set up yet another way. So 0 to 1, 0 to 1 minus y, 0 to y squared. Again, we've got our function f of x, y, z, dx, dz, dy. That's how you would see it written. Okay. Well, let's, uh, let's do it the other way. Let's do, uh, so we'll leave dx alone, but then we'll do dy dz. Okay, so again, our inside limits of integration aren't going to change. Okay, if I want to integrate with respect to y, though, next, let's go back to our region. Okay, so forget about that line now. If we're going to integrate with respect to y, well, now I'm going to draw my line parallel to the y-axis. And again, in this case, the, uh, the upper limit of integration is going to be the rightmost curve. Well, the rightmost curve is z equals uh, 1 minus y. But again, now we need to take this equation and we need to solve for y. Well, I can add y to the left and subtract z over. So equivalently, this line z equals 1 minus y, we can write that as y equals 1 minus z. So that would be my upper limit of integration. And again, if you think about the, uh, the leftmost curve, the z-axis, that would be the line y equals 0. Last but not least, we would integrate with respect to z. And with respect to z, again, we're just doing the smallest z-coordinate to the largest z-coordinate. So we would be going from 0 to 1. Okay, so again, just to write it one more time, 0 to 1, 0 to 1 minus z, and then from 0 to y squared, doing dx, then dy, and then dz. Okay, so I think we uh, had both, uh, both scenarios covered there. Again, I think these are tricky. Um, if you are getting this in one sitting, I would say either you're really, uh, really talented or by some amazing stretch, I'm doing a good job explaining it. I would probably say it's the uh, former less than the latter. So uh, we'll do uh, the very last situation and uh, one more video. So let's see. We did Z first. Uh, what do we just do now? We just did X just now. So in our last, uh, last video, we'll integrate with respect to Y first.